Welcome to the third video on the financial year report. In this video I will explain more about the financial indicators that are expected of you in the year report. Basically the indicators can be divided in four groups. The working capital, the liquidity, the solvency and the rentability. And you will use these indicators to compare the year reports of usually different companies with each other. It will be able to, uh, to give you an idea of how good a company is compared to another company, even though they might have a completely different balance size. Uh, as long as you're in the same industry, you can compare the indicators. So the working capital, basically the, long -term, uh, the working capital is the long-term capital available to finance floating assets. Uh, the normal, uh, in other words, it's a normal part of stores and debtors financed with long-term capital. So in a formula, the long-term capital, which is equity plus long-term debt, minus the fixed assets, is the working capital. Given the fact that the balance should be always in balance and that there are four elements in the balance sheet, you can also take the current assets minus the current liabilities. So the current cash you have minus the short-term liabilities, the short-term debt you have. If you have excess cash, you have working capital available. Working capital available basically means you have money available to invest in new investments. So using the example of the taxi company of, last, uh, of the last video, the working capital is calculated by taking the liquid assets and deducting uh, the, bank, the uncle's loan from this at least, and perhaps a part of the bank loan if you consider the last year of the bank loan to be short-term credit. Usually short-term credit is considered like a three-month period, which means that the bank loan, which will repay at the end of the year, is not yet a short-term uh, credit. So in this case, you would say that you have a two and a half thousand euros working capital. The next set, the liquidity ratios. Uh, the liquidity is the end, the extent to which a company is capable of meeting immediately imposable obligations. There are two of them, the current ratio and the quick ratio. The current ratio takes the floating assets and the short-term debts or the current liabilities and divides the one by the other. So if the floating assets are larger than the short-term debt, this, as this value will be larger than one. Uh, the working capital, as we saw in the previous slides, also uses floating assets and short-term debt. So if you have working capital, your liquidity, your current ratio at least, of the liquidity ratios, will be above zero and will be positive, which is a good sign of your company, you can do investments. If your working ratio is too big or your liquidity ratio becomes a lot bigger than two, then you usually have too much cash in your company and it would be wise to look for investments. But of course this also depends on the type of market you're in. Uh, if it's crisis, you might want to have some more cash to sit out the crisis. Then some arguments are that, okay, not all your floating assets can be converted directly into cash. For example, especially for a shipping company, the stores, the fuel in the vessel, cannot be converted uh, to cash that easily. Nobody's buying fuel from inside the vessel. So that means that there's also a quick ratio, and this means money that can be almost instantly converted into floating assets. And there you deduct the stores from the value of the floating assets, the total value of the floating assets. So this value will always be lower, and depending on the industry you're in, it should be also above one, or it can be even a bit lower, like in shipping, where it's usually around 0 0.75, 0 0.8. Using the same example as before, in this case the liquid assets are again the 2,500, the uncle's loan is the short-term credit, which already has been repaid at this point, so we have a, a current ratio and a quick ratio which are indefinite. Uh, they are divided by zero. However, with the uncle's loan present, if it would be 500, it would be of course still a factor of five and high enough to do the short-term uh, repayments. However, do consider again that the bank loan of 10,000 is to be repaid by the end of this year. So if you would have a balance sheet of maybe the end of the summer, September, the bank loan would be a short-term credit and you would need to make sure that you have enough liquid assets to repay this bank loan. But at the beginning of this year you still have more than enough time to accumulate this money to repay. Then the solvency ratio. The solvency ratio is basically the extent 
to which a company is capable to meet its obligation in case of liquidation. It is also the extent to which a company is financed by creditors. It's basically an indicator of how much money of the owner is at risk compared to the money of a bank or another type of lending agency. Uh, so the solvency, agency, the solvency ratio is the equity divided by the debt times 100%. Uh, and in this case, nowadays, this, this value will not be much more than 50%. It, it used to be times where this value would be much uh, lower, uh, where the equity could be as much as only a quarter of the debt. Uh, but nowadays, it needs to be much higher, between 50 and 75%. If you look on the internet for your solvency ratios, you will find different values of it, different versions of it. It is always a relation between the equity and the debt, the total debt, but it could be also the equity divided by the total of the balance, or the debt divided by the total of the balance. Of course, all these relations are basically expressing the same value, uh, because they all involve the equity and the debt. If we look at the example again, the equity is all the retained earnings plus the original equity divided by the total of the debts which are the bank loan and the uncons loan. So in this case the liability is uh, more, the, the, the solvency ratio we defined is more than 100%. Which is again an indicator that it might be a good time to attract more debt to the company because a, lower, a larger part of debt will give you a lower whack again. Which means it's time to invest some more money to get more debt. Finally, the return, uh, the rentability are uh, expressed in two terms. We have the return expressed as a uh, percentage of the capital employed, and we have the return expressed as a percentage of the equity. The return on capital employed takes the net profit plus the interest paid on the bank loans and all the other loans, uh, divided by the total capital at the start of the year. And this is an indication of how profitable your total investment was. Uh, you, the net profit is taken uh, plus the interest, which is basically the profit on the debt. And this is then taken as the total profit of the investment. The return on equity is only the net profit divided by the equity at the start of the year. And this will indicate how profit your investment is. So if you are doing well, the return on equity will be bigger than the return on the capital employed. If the return on equity is smaller, it's an indication that actually you would have earned more if you would not have taken on a loan and you're basically earning too little profits to compensate for the fact that you do have a loan. So you're getting in a shady area. To give a short example of this, eh, the equity and the retained earnings are in red uh, and the last profit is in green. So this is the return on equity. The return on equity divides the 5,400 profit by the 11,500, which will be roughly 50%, which is a, a very high number in the game. Uh, or in any company, you will be lucky if you have like 10 or 15% return on equity as desired uh, in the discussion in the business plan. So if you take the return on capital employed, we take the profit, which is 5,400, and we take the 2,000 of interest that we paid, both to our uncle as well as to the uh, car dealership, and so it's 7,500. The balance at the start of this year was 32,000, as shown in the bottom. So that means we have a 25% uh, result on our investment, which is still very good, which is still a lot higher than uh, regular, but it's a lot lower than the return on equity, so we did a good job by taking a loan. These are the uh, financial indicators that I would like to see back in the business plan. Please, take good, uh, please consider them carefully and make sure you do them for each of the balance sheets in your year report. Thank you for your attention.